Hello everyone and welcome to the Wine Ball and Bistros Familia Torres Wine Dinner. My name is Marta Delfa and I'm going to be your host for tonight. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Chris and Mary for letting us be part of their wine dinner series, as well as letting us be part of the San Diego wine community. Before we begin talking about the wines and the pairings, I would like you to introduce you to the history of Familia Torres. Familia Torres is a winery that was established in the town of Villafranca del Panades in 1870. Actually, this year we were celebrating our 150th anniversary. The town of Villafranca del Panades is located in the heart of the Panades wine region, which is 35 miles southwest of Barcelona. But before the winery was established, there is already registers of Familia Torres being vine growers since the 16th century. As you can see in this picture, they have been registered as vine growers since 1559. But the story begins with Miguel Torres and Jaime Torres Vandrell. Jaime Torres Vandrell was the small son of the family. Back on those days, back on the 19th century, the Catalan law was saying that as long as you have more than one son, the oldest one, in this case Miguel Torres, will be the one that has the right to inherit the house and the land of the family. The rest of the children, they will have to look for their own life. Jaime, knowing that and being the small son, he decided to take an adventure. Back on the 19th century, a lot of Spanish families were going to Central and South America and they were doing business there. So Jaime decided to go to the harbor in Barcelona and he asked for a job in the boats that were going to Central America. He got the job in a boat that was going to Cuba and actually working on that boat was the way that he made it to Cuba. Once he arrived there, he starts to work very hard and he decides to save all that money. That money was invested in the petrol and oil companies in New York. And that's how he became rich. Once he became rich, he decided to come back to Villafranca del Panades, to his hometown, and establish the winery together with his brother and his father. Actually, Jaime passed away without having any children. And that's why after he died, the company was passing to his nephew, Juan Torres Casals. Juan Torres Casals was a very important person in the winery because he was the first one who starts to distillate in Familia Torres. He started to produce the brandies back in 1920. And after Juan Torres Casals comes Miguel Torres Carbo. Miguel Torres Carbo, the third generation, he was actually the first one who was importing the wines of Familia Torres to United States back on the 50s. But before that, he was facing very, very hard times. Back in 1936 until 1939, we had the civil war in Spain, and we end up in a, with a dictator in the government that was named Francisco Franco. Francisco Franco decided to bomb the city of Villafranca del Panades, and he bombed the city, but also he bombed the winery of Familia Torres. As you can see in this picture, the winery was destroyed down to ashes. So Miguel Torres Carbo, he decided to rebuild the winery, but this time not in Villafranca del Panades. He just went a couple of miles away in the town of Pax del Panades, and this is where we are located nowadays. Thanks to him, nowadays we have a fourth and a fifth generation. We have here the fourth generation with Miguel Agustin Torres and the fifth generation with Miguel Torres Maxasek. Miguel Torres Maxasek is our CEO nowadays. We're also very proud to announce that we are part of the premium family Vini. Actually, Miguel Agustin Torres, you can see him in the central of the picture, was one of the fundators of this group of wineries of the world. Actually, this is a group of 12 wineries that they are all owned by a family. We have very important names and very prestigious names in the wine industry, like, for example, Vega Sicilia, Antinori, or Giuseppe Druan. And as I was saying, Miguel Agustin Torres was one of the fundators of this group of wineries. Their goal is always to produce the high quality wines, as well as to share their knowledge for the future generations. But Familia Torres is also very important when it comes to climate change. Actually, Familia Torres has been pioneer with the projects of sustainability. Actually, we decided to take a commitment back in 2008, and we decided to reduce our CO2 emissions by 30% by this year, by 2020. We didn't reach this goal in 2020. We already reached it last year, in 2019. And we know that the 30% is not enough. That's why we decided to take another commitment 
by 2045, we are going to reduce it by an 80%. How we do that, it's for example, we use solar panels in our wineries. We also reduce the amount of glass in the bottles. We, re we also use uh, recycling waters. We reduce recycling materials and also we use electric and hydric cars. These are also some of the projects that we take care of and that we, they help us reduce the CO2. But before we talk about the wines that we have today, I'm sure that you're very familiar with pictures like this, like traditions from Spain, like for example, the flamenco, which is our national dance, or also traditions like the running of the bulls that takes place in Pamplona. But I'm pretty sure you might not be that familiar when I'm showing you this tradition, the human towers. Actually, this is what we do in Catalonia, what we do in Vilafranca del Penedès, and this is a picture taken in Vilafranca del Penedès. The reason why I'm showing you these pictures is because I'm sure you're very familiar with wines, for example, from regions like Rioja, because it's the most known wine region in Spain. Or also, you might be familiar with wines made with Albariños or with Chacolines. But in Spain, we have a lot of diversity, as we just saw in the case of our culture. In Spain, we have 69 appellations of a region, and today we're going to focus in three of them. We're going to talk about the appellation of a region Rueda, Ribera del Duero, and we are going to finish our dinner in our hometown in Panades with the appellation of a region Panades. To begin with the dinner, we're going to talk about the Verdeo. The Verdeo, it's our wine made in Rueda and it's made 100% with Verdejo grapes. So in this case, it's a mono varietal wine. The region of Rueda, it's very interesting. The region of Rueda, it's located central of Spain, as you can see in the map, and has two very knowing neighbors. In the eastern side, we have Ribera del Duero, and in the western side, we have Toro. In the case of Rueda, it's very interesting because their production is mostly made with white wines. In this case, we're talking about the, the grapes of Verdejo, which is their local and autochthonous grape, but the second most planted grape variety is the Sauvignon Blanc. I'm talking about Sauvignon Blanc because the wine of Verdejo might remind you a little bit to the Sauvignon Blanc. You might find some common flavors, like for example, the green apples or the fennels. In the case of our Rueda wine, in the case of our Verdeo, we have a very nice acidity too. The Verdejos is a grape that tends to dry very quick and that will make that the acidity might not be as high as in other white grape varieties, like for example, Albariños. In our case, what we do, because we want to give that nice acidity is that we're going to harvest the grapes a little bit earlier, right at the beginning of the ripening circle. So normally we harvest our wine from Verdejo, our wine made in Rueda around the end of August. Here you can see some of the vineyards. This is our vineyard in Vilafranca del Duero, which is the town that is located in Rueda. And you can see that the vineyard has very, very interesting soils. These soils, it's what we know as pebble. Those pebbles are basically river stones. And the reason is because the entire vineyard used to be covered by the river Duero. Once the river disappeared centuries ago, all those, all those stones were left here by the river. That will give also a lot of minerality into our wine. This wine, our wine of Verdeo, it's what I used to call our patio pounder. Why? Because it's a great wine. You can have it with food or without food. The acid is medium, so it's not going to kill your stomach when you drink it on its own, but it's also very good for pairings. In this case, we have three very interesting dishes and three very diverse dishes within them. To begin with, we have the grilled salad with the romaine, the tomatoes, the artichoke heart, and also a sherry vinaigrette. Actually, artichokes and sherries, uh, sherries vinegar, they are two very difficult ingredients for pairings. In this case, it's going to be a great combination with the dish because the greenness of the wine are going to be a great pairing for that artichoke heart. Also, the fact that it has a higher acidity, it's going to balance very good the acidity of that sherry vinegar. Also, we will have it with the almond crusted halibut. 
because the wine it's so subtle and so gentle it's going to respect absolutely the tenderness and the fineness of the fish like halibut especially when we have that crusted almond um, that almond crusted that will bring also a little bit more complexity into the dish so the wine again it's going to be an absolutely great pairing with the almond crusted halibut and also we will have it with the white bean stew with shrimps Actually, white bistoon, it's a much more richer uh, uh, style of dish. It's very typical from central and north of Spain, where the temperatures go down during the night and we need like something warmer, something richer to help us survive the winter. So the complexity of the dish, it's going to be also very good balance with the wine. In this case, the acidity of the wine, it's going to help us digest all the fattiness of the dish. Also, we can have this dish with the Celeste. The Celeste, it's a wine that it's made 100% Tempranillo and that it will come in this case from the region of Ribera del Duero. Ribera del Duero, it's a neighbor region actually from Rueda. And it's very interesting because remember, Rueda, it's 100% of their production white wines. In the case of Ribera del Duero, it's 100% of their production red wines made mostly with the great variety of Tempranillo. In this case, the temperatures are extremely important to produce high-end tempranillos. In the case of Ribera del Duero, we are again located central of Spain and we have continental weather. That means that we will have very hot summers and very cold winters. That's why this white bean stew is so important, remember, to resist those cold temperatures. But at the same time, we will have very hot summers, but we will have a lot of difference of temperatures between the days and the nights. In the case of Ribera del Duero, the temperatures during the day is around 100 degrees, but the temperature will drop down to 40 degrees in the night, even in the summer nights. That's why, again, those rich stews are super, super important. Also, these temperatures are extremely important for the grape variety of Tempranillo. Tempranillo is a grape that tends to lack on acidity. That means that it has a low acidity. A natural way to keep that low acidity or to make it a little bit higher, it's by slowing down the ripening. And this is what we have thanks to those cold nights in the summer. During the hot days, the grapes of Tempranillo are going to ripen and are going to develop a thicker skin. That's why we'll find a red wine with a higher tannic structure, with much more complexity and much more color also. You can see that the color of this wine is almost very inky. But thanks to those cold nights, that ripening slows down and that makes that the natural acidity of the grapes that tends to be low will be a little bit higher. That's why also, even if we have a very full-bodied wine, we have also a very refreshing red wine. The quality of the Celeste is also very high because we always want the best quality in our grapes when we talk about Familia Torres wines. In this case, we harvest in very old vineyards, vineyards that are between 60 to 80 year old. On top of that, you if you see this vineyard, not all these vines are Tempranillo. In this case, we have also other grape varieties. That's why some of the leaves are very green and some of the leaves are very red. Tempranillo is one of those grape varieties that changes the colors of the leaf when it's a time of the harvest. Why we have here planted different grape varieties is because 60 and 80 years ago, the viticultures, they were, they were mixing the grapes, they were mixing the grape, the vines in the vineyard. And that's why what we will do in Familia Torres is we will pay the farmer for the entire plot, but we will tell them just to bring us the grapes of Tempranillos. Why we do that? Because the oldest the vines, the little will be the grapes that they produce, but the better will be the quality. That's why in this case, you can see these vines that they produce little amount of grapes. We need up to four of these vines in order to produce just one bottle of wine. But the quality and the concentration of these grapes, it's going to be amazing. Here you have another example of one of those vines that are very, very old in the case of Ribera del Duero. Also, Ribera del Duero, it's a, it's a region that it's, has very high quality wines of Tempranillo. And the reason is because of the high altitudes. These vineyards, and you can see how flat it is the landscape, they are located 3,000 feet above the sea level. That's why also you have an amazing sky map. And we decided to reflect that beautiful sky map in our label of Celeste. 
Actually, these same stars that you are seeing in the label right now are the same stars that you can see from our vineyards in Fonpedraza. As I was saying, Celeste, in this case, we have a wine that is 100% Tempranillo. Remember, because of those variation of temperatures, days and nights, we're going to find a wine that is more full-bodied and that will give us a lot of structure and a lot of black fruits. We will find a wine that might remind us to the blackberry, to the black currant, but also because of that aging in the barrels, it might bring us a little bit of smokiness. Actually, we get that smokiness because in this case, it's a Crianza wine. So it's a wine that we're going to age at least for one year in oak barrels and at least two years in the bottle before we can release the wine. So this wine has already some aging. That smokiness coming from the barrel, it's going to be an absolutely great pairing for these paprika chicken tights. Chicken tights are very tender and they have a little bit of fat in between the meat. That's why it makes it so tender. That fat is going to help us reduce that tannins, that dry tannins that this wine has and will make that it's a perfect balance on the mouth. But also the fact that this chicken tights, they have been with paprika. Paprika, it's a very smoky, spicy. So that smokiness from the paprika, it's going to be a great balance with the smokiness of the wine. Again, an absolutely delicious pairing and very traditional dishes. Also, we will have it with some couscous on the base and some roasted pepper that are going to bring much more complexity into the dish. And from Celeste and from Rivera del Duero, now we will have to take the car and we'll have to drive a little bit to the eastern side of Spain. And we're going to go to Catalonia and visit the Mediterranean Sea. We're going to stop in the wine region of Panades where we produce our wine of the Gran Coronas. Gran Coronas is a very special wine for us because remember, Familia Torres was established in the region of Panades, actually in the heart of the wine region of Panades, in Vilafranca del Panades. You can see it right here in the map. Vilafranca del Panades and actually the Panades wine region is a very interesting wine region because we have a total of 24,000 hectares of vineyards, but we have three different climates which make us um, have the chance to grow a lot of different grape varieties. Remember, in the case of Rueda, it was basically white grape varieties. We talk about the Verdejos, but we also say that they grow Sauvignon Blancs. In the case of Ribera del Duero, we were talking just about Tempranillos and 100% of their production is made with red grape varieties. In the case of Panades, we can grow a lot of different grape varieties. And on top of that, we can grow grape varieties that comes from two very different regions, like for example, the Muscats, the Shiraz or the Garnachas, which are traditional grape varieties, very well adapted in Mediterranean areas. We can find them in the coastal in Spain, but we can also find them in south of France and also in the coastal and warm areas of Italy. But at the same time, we can grow also grape varieties like the Rieslings and the Gebustraminas, which are typical from Central Europe. The reason why we can grow so many different grape varieties is because in Panades we have different altitudes. We have vineyards that are very coastal and they are right next to the Mediterranean Sea, but we have vineyards that goes almost 20, 2,700 feet above the sea level. That makes that the temperatures that we're going to face in the coastal areas are going to be much more Mediterranean. That means that we are going to have very similar temperatures during the days and during the nights. Normally in Barcelona and in this case in Villafranca del Panades, the temperatures are very moderate. We don't have very hot summers and we don't have very cold winters. That's completely the opposite from central of Spain. At the same time, the humidity is much higher and some grape varieties, they don't do that well when the humidity is very high. The temperatures during the day and during the night, they are very similar. We get around 86 degrees during the day and down to 82 during the night. So again, almost no changing of temperatures, days and nights. From the other side, the more far away that we go from the Mediterranean coast and the higher we go in altitudes, the temperatures are going to change and they are going to get colder regions. And at the same time, we are going to get much more conscious of temperatures days and night. That's why we can grow, for example, the grapes of Rieslings and Gebiustraminas. In this case, we're talking about the Gran Coronas. And Gran Coronas is a wine that it's made with Cabernet Sauvignon and Tempranillo. Actually, we have 
a blend of 85% Cabernet Sauvignon and a 15% of Tempranillo. The wine of Gran Coronas is going to be produced mostly in the central Panades, where the temperatures are moderate, but here we start getting a little bit more contrast days and night. And at the same time, here the vineyards are 500 meters above the sea level, so around 1,500 feet above the sea level. The Gran Coronas, it's a very special wine because it's made with some of the oldest vines of Cabernet Sauvignon that we have in the Panades wine region. Actually, the vineyard that you can see right here was first planted back in 1966. And we do use some of the grapes of this vineyard to produce the Gran Coronas. This is actually the vineyard that you can see right from across our winery. So if you ever come to Barcelona and you come to visit Familia Torres, you're more than welcome to come and visit us and you will see this vineyard and you will be able to walk through the same vineyard that is producing the wine that you're drinking right now. Also, as I was saying, we have a blend. So we have, Gran, uh, we have Cabernet Sauvignon from one side and also we have Tempranillo from the other side. Here you can see that we harvest all the grapes by hand in the case of the Cabernet Sauvignon and that's why we have also such a good quality wine. So Gran Coronas, it's going to be also a little bit aged. In this case, it's a Reserva wine. So we age it for 12 months in French oak barrels and two years in the bottle before we release the wine. In this case, the wine is going to be paired with the braised beef cheeks, um, braised actually with cider. That cider will bring a lot of acidity and that will help also that the beef cheeks are going to be very tender. Beef cheeks, besides being tender, they have also a little bit of fat in between. And that fattiness, remember, it's going to help relax a little bit the wine. It's going to help balance that dryness of the tannins of the Cabernet Sauvignon. A very traditional pairing because actually beef cheeks and pork cheeks are very, very typical in the region of Panades and especially in Catalonia. I hope you're going to enjoy this wine. And I just want to thank you again for being tonight with us and for being uh, letting me be part of your wine dinner tonight. I will also like to take this opportunity again to thank Chris and Mary for letting us be part of the wine dinner, wine dinner series. And I hope that you're enjoying the dinner. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.